if you ask for more data. If you ask for less data, charge you less money. For this request, you get a list of videos in the playlist. You may apply one or more of these values. I'm going to create a console app and I'll call it Video List. I'll put everything in a try catch block first. And I'm going to expect that the user types in a command like this video list.exe slash playlist ID. I'll first check the length of the args parameter. this method first. And here I'll just print this. And if we have a proper playlist ID, I'll just get it. And maybe I'll call a function called get videos and playlist and give it the playlist ID and maybe I'll make it async so just I'll have to stall the current thread anyway because this is a console app and I'll have another function called print results or print result we'll give it the result I don't know what the type of this is going to be so and I don't know actually at, at this point I don't know anything so it's all make believe so let's go and create each function first. Let me create the print result function. I'll just create a stub and say, I don't know what this is, so I'll have it be dynamic. And I will then create this guy. And this guy is going to take a playlist ID and return something dynamic, which I have no idea what it's going to be or what it's going to look like. And this is going to be async. So I'll say async, and obviously it's going to be a task or something dynamic. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is put everything that I need to send, all the query string parameters, in some kind of a dictionary of string, string. And in C sharp 6, which is what I'm using, we have the dictionary initializer, which I'm going to take advantage of. And the things I need are a key, which I'll get from. So I'm going to need to set a reference to system.configuration. configuration manager our app settings and I'll read uh, the API key from there and I won't show you my API key so let's just create there's already an app config in which I'm going to create an app settings and I'll put my I'll get that value and put it over here from YouTube and I will get the API key from here then I need the playlist ID which I have from the argument to this function and then I need a part which is going to be snippet and I need fields which is going to be page info, comma, items, slash snippet. And from the snippet, I need title and description. These are the things I need. And an optional max results. Which I'll say, please return 50 of these. That's basically it. In fact, I have to make this a string. I have a base URL. I think that's HTTPS, dub, 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 Google APIs, dot com, slash YouTube, slash version 3, slash, the endpoint is called playlist items. And I'll put a question mark. And now I need to compose a full URL out of this and attach all of these guys to that. So I'll just write another function. I'll make full URL or something like make URL with query. And I'll give it the base URL and I'll give it the parameters. 
let's write this. This is going to return a string and it's going to take a base URL which is of type string and it's going to take an i enumerable of, I'll just genericize this, i enumerable of key value pair of string string. And all this is going to do, obviously I need to first sanitize the arguments, so if the base URL string dot is null or empty base URL, then throw a new argument null exception. Uh, if the parameters is null or parameters dot count equals zero. For that, I need system dot link. Okay, I've already got that. Uh, then uh, just return the base URL without any thing. Otherwise, um, I can concatenate. What I can do is to the parameters, just aggregate. Uh, I need a different. I need to return a string, so I'm going to have to use this overload that lets me specify the return value. I'll say I need to take a T source. T source is a, a, a key value pair of string, string, and I need to return a string. And so, sorry, what's wrong with this? So the seed is going to be the base URL and a func that takes a string which is the accumulated value and it takes a key value pair and it turns a string and that string is going to be uh, let's just say string dot format I need to attach the base URL along with no, sorry I need to attach the accumulated value so I need an interpolated string with the accumulated value and then I'll need to attach the key value pairs key I need an equal to sign after that and then I need the key value pairs value and then an ampersand which will leave a training ampersand at the end which I don't care about that's the parenthesis of the string not format and that's the parenthesis of the aggregate function and I think I can return just this guy. And then this whole thing becomes unnecessary. I just needed that to write the correct signature. Uh, that becomes my make URL with query. Once I have the URL with the query, I need to just fire the request. So I could say new HTTP client from system.net. And in fact, I don't need the client anymore, so I'll just say um, download string, get string async with the full URL. And that's going to give me a task which I have to await. I don't have any other option right now, so I'll get some kind of a string which will be the result or the response. And I'll check if the result is null, then do something else. If it's not null, do, do the thing. Maybe just JSON convert it, make it an object, and return that object. This is JSON string. Otherwise, return default of dynamic, which is my return type. Um, so I need JSON convert. Do I have a reference to Newton Soft? No, by default, I don't. So I can go to the package manager. All I need to do here is return JSON convert from Newton's of JSON of deserialize object from the result. And that's going to be a dynamic object. Now, by looking at the structure, which we've already done in the in this video earlier, um, I know what I have. I know what this dynamic object looks like roughly. So the print result, in the print result, I'm going to have to hard code everything because I know what it looks like. It's a dynamic object. So 
I am just going to assume that things are um, things are things that I expect are there. Uh, total items in playlist are these many. Let's have an interpolated string, and that's going to be result dot items dot sorry not items that's page info dot total results I think it was called and let me format it to two digits to the right and then I'll have I want to display how many of these are public items so this is going to include this count is going to include all the private unlisted videos but I want to see how many actual videos do I have in this result set uh, I could do that by getting a count result dot items dot count and that's that's an array that's a JSON object JSON array that's going to have a property called count and I can say total public items um, or public items and playlist is this guy count which I'm going to format and align left by two digits and then just for separating the rest of the content I'll do this and then I can start printing uh, you know if the count is greater than zero if there were any videos in this playlist and for each uh, video uh, for each item in this playlist result our items please write down this item is going to have a snippet property so I just want the snippet uh, the item dot snippet dot title that's what I want and then I'll have a number here uh, so let me let me have a counter here say I this is the IF video and so I'll just say plus plus I and let me format this um, three places to to write and then I'll have this guy, and this. In fact, all of this is going to go into string dot format. So that's string dot format, and that's console dot write line. I have the results printed. And now let's go back to the main method. I got the videos. I printed the results, and let me just because this is a For debugging purposes, um, let's do that. And that's about it, I guess. Let's run it. I don't have any arguments right now, so I should get a help message if I run this. Sorry, what happened? Something just happened. Yes, um, so I didn't have a console.read key over here, which is fine. I, I didn't have a console.read key while printing the help, which is fine. I'm still running it inside Visual Studio, the debugger. But if I run, run it on the command line, let's, let's do that. Um, let's go to this guy. Let me change the prompt to something smaller so a lot of it can fit. Let's say video list, and let me copy and paste. That's 37 videos, but some of these are not published yet. So if I copy and paste this ID over here, oops. Okay, I don't know what error occurred. So it will be a good idea to, since we have an async API, it's, it's a good idea to just have an aggregate exception here, which I will flatten out. Now see the inner exceptions let's do this let's run this now in fact let's build it first okay let's go back here and run the previous command Okay, after a little bit of poking around, I realize that these query string parameters are case sensitive, 
And this L is not to be capital, it's a small L over here. So let's run this now, and it runs perfectly fine. It says I have 37 items in this playlist, of which 29 are public. The rest are either deleted or they're yet to be published. Or they're unlisted. Let's also run this on the command prompt. And it returns all the videos. Let's try this for a bunch of playlists.